Good morning, the leading California world. It's David Berry, your host of Money Matters, and it's already episode number eight. Man, these weeks just fly by and uh, excited to hear what happened in the news. And uh, our special host, co-host, Monty Feltz, is, uh, looks like you're in Colorado. It looks like you're in, a, you're in a different environment. So good morning, Monty, how are you? Yeah, I didn't leave California, but I left Texas just temporarily. It's very hot there. Uh, and yeah, we're in Estes Park, Colorado this week with family, uh, enjoying some time at the YMCA of the Rockies. Well, for all of our members, I hope that all of your travels are going to be safe and, and you're going to get to have some great family time this summer. I know that a lot of people are traveling. Matter of fact, I'll be in Mexico, Cabo San Lucas next Monday for our episode nine. And uh, Terry, how are you doing? What's going on down in Florida? Uh, rain every day down here in Florida. We've been getting rain every day for the last week and uh, low 90s and um, uh, loving life. I, I will say my air conditioner went out on Friday, so uh, three days without air conditioning. Uh, it's a little challenging to sleep at night when it's uh, 90 degrees in your house, but we manage. Well, I have to tell you guys, uh, I'm super excited. It's been a little bit of a delay, but um, I don't know for our listeners out there, Monty Feltz is our national sponsor. He's our national lender. And the videos are starting to come out now from our Leading California Freedom Tour. And uh, boy, Terry, you got a really great editor and uh, super excited about the videos that are coming out. I know this is off topic, but you know, one of the things I like to share each week is I like to give tips. And we all three agree that the best thing you can do is go check out these different cities. And Terry and I have a compilation of some amazing cities with some great footage. And man, our, our videographer, Sam, uh, editor, he's doing amazing. So I'm super excited about that. Terry, thank you for getting these these uh, videos done. And we're going to start being able to distribute them. Looking forward to it. In fact, I, I was on the phone with one of our members this morning from California, leaving California for the Asheville, North Carolina area. So the, she's very excited about heading out that way. She and her husband are uh, looking to leave California. And uh, one thing she said is she said, I'm just so tired of my all my paycheck going to the state uh, with them spending money the way I don't approve of. So looking forward to uh, having them uh, give their story too. Well, speaking of paychecks, let's dive in, Monty. And how can people keep some of that paycheck money to themselves? And how about home ownership? Let, what do you got for us today, Monty? I can't wait to hear. Yeah, thanks, David. So some interesting updates in the past week, not necessarily all as we expected them to be, although good news, just the way the media takes that uh, is often different than the way it really is. So this week is no different. Uh, both inflation and home sales moved lower. Uh, home prices though hit another all-time high. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We'll hit that inflation first. Uh, May's personal consumption expenditures, that favorite measure of inflation, for the Fed showed that the headline inflation was unchanged from April. The year over year reading declined 2.7 to 2.6. So what does this mean? It means the Fed has been working really hard to tame inflation, hiking that benchmark Fed funds rate, that overnight borrowing rate between banks 11 times between March of 2022 and July of 2023. They do this. The reason they did this was to slow down the economy by making borrowing more expensive and then lowering the demands for goods so that pricing pressure inflation would shrink. So the Fed has held rates steady, thankfully, since last September, uh, because inflation has been making good progress lower uh, since late last year. And so that's that's good. We've also seen it stall in the first quarter. While the Fed members have emphasized that they don't expect to cut rates until they're confident that inflation is moving sustainably towards that 2% target, uh, May's tamer inflation readings are a welcome sign. So that is really a good thing that those came in lower. So should give them more confidence as far as inflation goes. The second bit was the new home sales. Uh, those kind of slipped. Those measure signed contracts on new homes and that fell 11.3% from April to May. Uh, that's significantly lower than what was forecasted uh, where forecasts were saying there would be a rise. So signed contracts were also 16.5% lower than they were in May of last year. So what does this mean? It means despite the pullback in sales, demand for new construction remains really strong due to that persistent shortage of existing homes. So more available supply is needed to meet the buyer demand. 
There's about 481,000 new homes available for sale as of the end of May, and that's slightly higher than the 474,000 seen in the previous report when we were looking at April. Only 99,000 though of those were completed. The rest of those are under construction, not even started yet. So yeah, uh, it's interesting to see all of this happen. Builders uh, are also constructing smaller, more affordable homes to meet buyer demand. And that's pushing that median home price slightly lower comparatively to what, what we've seen in the past. So it doesn't mean that homes are worth less. Uh, it just means builders are starting to, to do things to get homes moved quicker. So, so Monty, you brought up, you brought up a really interesting point and we've, we've touched on this on our show quite often, you know, the media doesn't tell the truth or, and sometimes you really can't, um, you can't believe what you hear from the media. Could you elaborate a little bit more on why should people believe you and, and, and what makes your report different mm -hmm. than what all, because they keep hearing all this stuff and, and we want to let them know. That, so if somebody's really trying to find someone that they can trust and count on, why should they believe you? Yeah, wow, well, you, you put me on the hot seat here. I'm, I don't think they should believe me personally over anybody else. I really think they should determine their own opinions and do their own research. What we're trying to do is bring to light some of the real numbers behind it. And it uh oh, Terry, it's the Wi-Fi in the mountains, the Wi-Fi in the mountains. Well, what do you think? You want to finish his statement until he comes back? What do you think he was going to say? Oh, there he is. He's back. Oh, no. Did did I did I go away? You closing just time. for just for about 15 seconds there. But, uh, oh, but you man. started to say, do your research and, yes. and come up with your own conclusions. Basically, yes. Come up with your own conclusions. We're here to share with you some real numbers of what it is, trying to be unbiased about what you should do, being that should you move or should you not move. We're wanting to highlight sort of as a contra to what the media is saying that it is still a good time to buy. And I, I can I can prove that to you uh, by talking about how homes are continuing to appreciate that really matters more than whether the feds cut rates immediately later whatever the value of your home is all that matters when you go to sell it nobody cares what your interest rate was you care what the house is worth now so that also came in this past week the case shiller home price index we talk about case shiller a lot they're the gold standard for appreciation and that shown that showed that those home prices nationwide rose again 0.3% from March to April after seasonal adjustments. So that's the other thing is you see a lot of adjustments in the unemployment numbers and the inflation numbers. So the media latches on to the first number and mm -hmm. makes a big headline. And by the time there's an adjustment, it's old news. Uh, it, it really doesn't mean anything except that it means everything because that's the truth. So if I were to tell you something really outlandish but then tomorrow tell you, oh, that wasn't true. You've still had the reaction of the outlandish comment. That's really what I mean by the media doesn't tell the truth. So home values in April were 6.3% higher than a year earlier. So that is great. That means we are above where we were even in 2023. We are continuing to trend to seven, 8% for 2024. So it's a great, great time to put your money in a house that that's why we're here we're wanting people to know don't be scared go make it possible. i heard money i heard decades ago that when we have inflation which we have mm. now even though it yes. may be a little bit tamer it doesn't mean that prices are coming down it just means they're not increasing as fast as they were before but i heard that it's a great time to own a house when there is inflation because inflation affects housing prices also and so don't wait for the prices to come down. They're just may they just may not rise as quickly as before. And so you know, buy now because they're still going to go up as it typically. I mean, we don't have a crystal ball, but we know that that's usually what happens in an inflationary environment is that home prices continue to go up and probably faster than other parts of the economy uh, when it comes to inflation. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to show a chart next week. Uh, if y'all will remind me if this would be helpful to everybody that shows in 81 years of appreciation, homes have gone up 73 times out of 81. And so, no, it doesn't always go up, but it 
pretty well does. So it's it's something worth looking at. I think I've owned a home most of those years that it went down. You know, yeah, that's good. You know, Monty, I it's interesting because in my market in Las Vegas, uh, fifty one percent of all the homes that we have in Las Vegas, and we have a lot. We have two and a half million people that live in Southern Nevada. Fifty one percent of them are renters. I have sta stated on some of our shows in the past that I believe that the government and they're they're trying to make it acceptable that people rent. And you know, one of our key phrases that we use every week about leaving California is everybody always says, I wish I would have left sooner. You know, there's nobody in the game and Monty, maybe you could touch a little bit on this, but nobody would ever say, well, I'm really glad that I rented for the last five years had they bought a house. See, the problem is, is that if you're not in the real estate game, you're going to have some ups and downs for sure. But if you're renting 100% of your money is being basically thrown away. So maybe you could touch on that a little, Monty, about I know we talk about it a lot, but I think it's really, really important to understand. And, and a lot of my clients are saying we just have to wait. We've got to wait till the interest rates come down and we know that there's a house there, there's a housing, uh, what is the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's good. Bubble. The bubble is going to burst. Poof. And uh, so can you touch on that, Monty? Yeah, there's, there's no housing bubble. Uh, there's nothing about our current time that's similar to 2008, 2009. So that's what we most often hear is this is just like 08, 09. This is nothing like 08, 09. Uh, when you look at all the inventory, when you look at where where rates are, when you look at the way that we do loans, the way we're regulated right now, so many things have changed because of what happened during 08, 09, that it would be impossible for us to make those bad loans like happened a long time ago. To your point on renting, yes, 100% of that is going away. You're, you're, you are always paying a mortgage. Let's say it that way. You're always paying a mortgage. You're either paying your mortgage or your landlord's mortgage. That's true. Either yeah. way, you're paying somebody's mortgage. And so yeah. you're helping somebody else get rich if you're renting. Now, I don't want to be saying that that is never something you should look at. I myself have rented multiple times in my life. In seasons, it made sense. But it was with a very short time frame in mind and the goal of getting right back to home ownership. So know that, have a plan. Yes, home ownership is the way to building wealth. Warren Buffett, I think we would all agree, is a very wise financial man. He said, when others are greedy, be fearful. And when others are fearful, be greedy. Well, I would say our nation is pretty fearful right now around mm -hmm. home buying. So it would be a time from Warren Buffett's standpoint to be greedy, to go make it happen. Go get the bigger house and, and push yourself a little bit because when it goes the other way, you're going to have a lot of armchair quarterbacking from people that think they know why it happened, why they missed out on such a great deal. That's not what we want. We want you to get to have such a good deal right now uh, with less competition. Well, and think about this also. If you are renting, um, you're losing out on appreciation uh, other than your rent is probably inflationary. So you're paying more rent next year if you if you continue to rent. But you're also you're missing out on the appreciation but you're also missing out on the tax deductibility of the interest on a mortgage loan and if that is thousands of dollars you know if it's one two three thousand dollars a month of mortgage interest that's you pay income tax on that and i'm not a tax advisor talk to your tax advisor but you definitely you're missing out on appreciation and the tax deductibility of the mortgage interest that you're paying and so to me it's a double whammy now i understand just as monty as you said some people have to rent it, it only makes sense to rent that kind of thing but if you're holding off on home ownership because you think prices are going to drop or interest rates are going to come down well I, monty you've said this many times i'm sorry as soon as the, as soon as interest rates start dropping you're going to have hundreds of thousands if not millions of people come right back into the market that you're going to have to start competing against to buy that same home, which means that prices are gonna to continue to rise. You know, each week we we cover this, um, our Money Matters show is important. And by the way, last week, for those of you that missed it, I did an interview of our founder, Terry Gilliam. If you haven't had a chance to uh, check that out, please message me and I can send you a copy of the interview of his vision. 
But um, as we're coming to a close of episode eight, Terry, can you maybe can you share with our members why you decided to put together the Money Matters show and, and what you're really trying to accomplish? We touched on this a little bit last week, but in relation to the Money Matters show and your resources that you're providing to our almost 300,000 members, why did you decide to put the show together? Sure. So Amy Lee Lucas in Knoxville, Tennessee introduced us to Monty. Um, we do have a lot of professionals in our group that help out, and uh, Monty is just an expert. He's a he, uh, lens nationwide. He has his finger on the pulse of what's going on economically, interest rate wise, mortgage wise, uh, creative programs that can help you uh, get into a house when you don't think you can. And I, I'm trying to. We are trying to educate our members that there are solutions out there that maybe you just don't know about or haven't considered. And that's why we wanted to introduce people to Monty and bring his expertise every week. Um, and just to show you that we do have a lot of great tools uh, accessible to our members to help them uh, for if they want to leave California. And again, we keep saying this, if you want to stay, if you're happy in California, by all means stay. Uh, but if you're looking to leave like the member that I spoke to this morning, uh, then there are people like Monty in this group and love having him as a, as a weekly member uh, our weekly expert to help us understand what's going on in the economy, what's going on with the housing market and with interest rates, because uh, uh, they're all interconnected and we need to see how they work each week and educate us on uh, why people should work with somebody like Monty when it comes to moving. Thank you so much, Terry. And Monty, I'm going to kind of stay on the same as we wrap up today, episode eight. Um, we feel so blessed and so lucky that every week we have somebody of your caliber to to share. Well, why did you decide to take on this project and what is your vision and goal for all of our members for that watch this? Yeah, great, great question. Well, I'm honored to get to do this every week and I wanted to do it today, even though we're on vacation, we're in Colorado and all that. It's important uh, when when you feel like there are others out there depending on you. I'm sure many of you have felt that when you're a parent, uh, when you're a boss, you want to take care of them. I think it's Spider-Man quote that said with great um, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, you've also got Luke 12, 48 in the Bible that says to whom much is given, much is expected. So I think we three men embody that and strive for that every day. And this is one way we get to do that uh, by blessing you, educating you, helping you, getting in the trenches with you. We will talk to you about your personal situation. If you will reach out to me, we will set up a time. I'll go through it, strategize with you. There's nothing like having somebody by your side who knows what to do and knows what options are out there. I would say 50% of the time I get on a call with somebody, I've got options that they never knew were even possible from a loan perspective. So let's do that. Uh, I love being part of this. It's to educate. That's my end goal is to educate and help and also to move people out of California and into great states to change their family and legacy, their legacy uh, generations to come. Well, we do this for free every week. And I never say this, Terry, and I need to start getting in the habit of doing it because I watch a lot of videos. I know you guys do too. And that's how we, that's how America stays educated. So for our members out there, I'm gonna ask for a favor. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, because we do this for free and we're just giving this. We're not really asking for anything back. Although if, you, if you're looking for a lender, you're looking for someone in Las Vegas, that you need to purchase a home, I would love to be your realtor. But please like and subscribe, please share our content. And by the way, as we close, Terry, uh, this this show is starting to really take off. And, and I, I think, Terry, you were looking at the numbers and, and this show is growing quite a bit. Yeah, we get thousands of views from our, um, from our videos, uh, especially the shorts uh, to help educate people on the best way to leave California. Well, thanks again. Episode eight is in the books. I hope that this was educational for you. And again, please hit that like button for us. Keep watching. I'll be in Cabo San Lucas next week doing our show from Mexico. And I uh, hope you guys have a great week. And if you need any help or happy counseling. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Absolutely. All right. Take care, everybody. Exactly. We'll see you later.